Hello there. Welcome to Healthy Cooking with your friendly Italian. I'm Jim Burrow. And I'm Marilyn Burrow. And we're here to talk about food, give you some recipes, and today we have a special guest with us, Casey Galloway from Cafe 19, and we're going to talk to her about the restaurants and uh, uh, all the wonderful, wonderful food she has there. But before we get into that, <clears throat> I want to let everybody know, tomorrow, start of a Farmer's Day, Farmer's, uh, farmer's market, market at People's Park. At People's Park. Yeah. In in four counties, we have 16 different farmers market. Plus, we have the regional markets of Rochester and Syracuse, and a great market down in Ithaca. And we urge all of you to take advantage of of, of these markets. Fresh produce, great stuff. Really, more. And you're supporting the, the, the local yeah. uh, uh, farmers and, you know, back to uh, what is local is good. I mean, we were talking about what is sustainable. We've been talking about that on the show for a long time. So this is your chance and to go price, down to. And the prices to, are reasonable. Yes. So, so, let's so see. wherever you are, use your farmer's markets, whether yes. they're local or whether they're out in Seattle or Portland or New York or Times Square in New York City, so <laughs> which they have an incredible farmers market. <laughs> so um, the recipes that we're we're going to be giving today, in honor of Casey, Casey makes fantastic soups. So I thought I would come up with a couple of uh, cold soup recipes. And, and <clears throat> we're going to have a potato leek soup, which is a fancy name for vichyssoise. A fancy name is vichyssoise. <laughs> a chilled roast pepper soup with Casey. I know you do. Yes. Do you use yes. tomato or roast, uh, roasted pepper? I've done, done both. Yeah. You've done I both. I love roasted peppers. Yeah. Yes. And we're going to, I, 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 I think it's fantastic. One of the finest, finest I've had. And then Casey uh, is going to give us, a, uh, we're going to get a recipe from her for a balsamic pasta with balsamic vinegar uh, over it. So we're going to do all that. So, Casey, welcome. Thank you for having me. You're more than welcome. Uh, uh, if This is Cafe 19. Tell me yes. what Cafe 19 stands for. Cafe 19 uh pays homage to the 19th Amendment to the Constitution, which gave women the right to vote, Correct. which is very important to us here in Seneca Falls and in the whole country. Yes. But, um, yep, and if you go into the cafe, you'll actually see that our artwork has been inspired by the 19th Amendment as well. We have all modern pop art of women from the women's right movement, and it's really a lot of fun. It is. Andy Warhol is. Uh, well, like it looks like that Andy Warhol. Yeah. Yeah, it's that, that style. style. Yep. And, and the other thing is, uh, which, uh, who, uh, a couple of her people can then tell you <laughs> which of these women. And it's sometimes a little hard to distinguish, yes. but, <laughs> but they're wonderful. The colors are wonderful. The decoration is wonderful. Besides the food, yep. the whole place is just. It's, it's very extreme. modern. The yes. interior designer that designed it did a great job. She. Um, definitely put a lot of unique elements yes, inside did. the the ceiling. I'm not going to say too much. You should come in and check you it out. It's so hard to it. describe. It, it is. Beautiful. Our son and daughter-in-law came over when they were up, and they live in Jersey City and work in the city. And they they were and both architects, and they were uh, just blown away uh, by the architecture and, and the design. So and I love how bright and open it, it is. is. You almost feel like you're sitting outside because the and whole you can front sit is outside. windows. And now, yep. yes, yeah. and now you can, yep. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and they're going to have an awning so that you yes. don't even have to be in the sun. So, yep. And to think that that was a supermarket at one time. <laughs> to even think, you can't even imagine that it was. It's now Generations whatsoever. Corporate Headquarters and Cafe 19. Yes, Generation Bag Headquarters is there where the old... What was the name of the place before? Uh, it, well, what I it had lots of names. The lots yeah. of names. The original the one. The one I the sticks in my mind most was the Super Duper, Super but it went yep. through several yep. names. So and um, and and the fact that Generations Bank and Casey can attest to this has given a woman-made business the opportunity. Now, this is a separate business. This is not yes. run by Generations Bank. This is run by Casey. Yep. So, Casey, you can explain. You know, mm -hmm. the opportunity. Well, Menzo Case, the president of Generations Bank and Generations Bank themselves have been 
more than generous with, uh, you know, letting me be involved in the design of the cafe um, and the menu and really uh, let me develop what I wanted to have there um, because this is my passion and I've known Menzo for a long time and he's a great guy and, you know, they gave me ownership of the business and I'm very, very thankful to, for the opportunity that they've given me and I'm very excited to be a part of the community. I love Seneca Falls and, you know, we've been very well received so far, which has been Good. And awesome. can, you, can you tell us about w what your background yeah, a is? Of your background. Sure, yeah. Yes. Well, I've always loved cooking. <laughs> Since I was a kid, I remember being in the kitchen with my mom and uh, she let me make banana bread. It was the first thing I ever made by myself and it came out really good and everybody liked it and I knew this is what I wanted to do from that moment on. It just, you know, it always came naturally to me kind of and mm -hmm. I've had a passion for food and um, so I grew up, I decided after high school that I was going to go to culinary school so I went to Paul Smith's College which is up in the Adirondacks. Mm -hmm. I attended there for two years and got my associate's degree in culinary arts. Um, and then I've worked around, I worked in Baltimore for a little while uh, at a big restaurant. And, you know, every place that I've worked, I've just tried to take some knowledge and experience and learn from the people that I've worked with because I've worked with a lot of very talented mm -hmm. chefs. And um, so the biggest part of my career was I worked at the Aurora Inn for nine years. Yes. Um, I was the sous chef there and I did a little bit of everything. I worked right. breakfast, lunch, dinner, banquets. Uh, I didn't really delve into pastry arts with the pastry chef, but I observed what she did and right. learned a lot of technique from Surely her. Surely caught on. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, that's what's cool is that uh, I like cooking and baking. Yeah. So if I get tired of, you know, making soups once in a while, I'll just go make a cake. <laughs> there you right. go. Right. And were, weren't you at the college for a while, too? I worked at Wells College, college for a little while, right? yep. Yeah. Yep, I was the dining hall manager yeah. there. Tried mm -hmm. something different. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so let's talk about the menu, what you what you serve there. You open, uh, you open up at? We open at 7, Monday through Friday. We're open 7 to 2. And then uh, Saturdays we're open 8 to 2. Okay. And we serve breakfast Monday through Friday. And the breakfast menu, well, with my whole menu, I try to use fresh ingredients. That's the All most right. important yes. thing to me is yes. the quality of the right. product that I'm well, putting no out. No question that makes a big difference mm -hmm. in the taste. Yep. It really does. So, you know, I don't want to just say, okay, I'm going to put a breakfast sandwich on the menu. I want to say, how can I make this the best breakfast sandwich that somebody's going to eat? So I you know, use local New York State eggs, and I uh, cook them fresh for every sandwich. You go know, sometimes, and you know, eggs might be microwaved, or they right. use the frozen eggs. That was not an option. <laughs> oh, good. So we <laughs> use the fresh <laughs> eggs, and you know, I just every dish I have my my hands in, and I make it with care, and I think that's a big difference. I, I love the breakfast tortilla that is filled the with burrito, all the, the, the burrito, burrito yes, yes. which is absolutely fantastic. That's definitely the most popular breakfast yep. item that we have. And I have to tell you, I have a personal uh, addiction. On Wednesdays, we go in after yoga, yep. and we have a scone. I share it with a friend because <laughs> scones are have a lot of calories, but she makes the very best scones. Thank so you. we, uh, Roberta Fisher and I share one and we cut it in half and she warms it for us so that's my my indulgence for Wednesday after I've worked out at yoga so. well, the scones are a lot of fun I feel like uh, we're trending away from people eating a lot of muffins and the scones right. are much yes. more popular than the oh muffins and they're are. so delicious and she made you know we've had lemon poppy seed give some other oh. uh, ones that you've made <laughs> salted <laughs> caramel yeah uh, rhubarb now that it's in season it's seasoned. we've been using local rhubarb so uh, yes fruits and chocolates and you can really put any flavor combination in there so and so then, I recommend the scones highly. <laughs> and then you can, for me, I can get my espresso there, yes. which I thoroughly enjoy. Yep, we have a beautiful espresso machine and very talented baristas working at the cafe who put a lot of care into the drinks that they're making. We use mm -hmm. Finger Lakes coffee roasters, coffee and espresso. 
Mm-hmm. Very fond yeah. of them. Well, they're all wonderful. I try to stay away from your desserts, but I <laughs> some of them she I just does can't. Make right? excellent food. So <laughs> let's talk about lunch. Okay. Well, what what, uh, what what do you have for lunch? The lunch menu. I tried to keep the menu very simple. Um, items that could get out quickly because we have a lot of business people and the chiropractic students uh, like to come in, and they you know they're usually in a hurry, so I want to get the food out fast. Um, so salads and sandwiches and soups. Yeah, um, soups. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have a different soup every day, and yeah, I love making soups. Uh, all, they're all made from scratch, of course. Um, and then the meats on the sandwiches, I roast my own uh, beef for the roast beef sandwich. I roast my own turkey for the turkey wow. sandwich. Makes a huge it's real difference. real turkey. Exactly. <laughs> right. <laughs> And her clam chowder or her, her seafood chowders are incredible. Mm-hmm. Those are excellent. I, I haven't had anything bad there yet. <laughs> well, neither have I, but, you know. So let's, um, let's give some recipes out. Okay. And we know that uh, you all know the recipes are available uh, uh, on the program. Uh, so I'm going to go through them fairly quickly. Uh, as, again, in honor of her, I, of her wonderful soups, I'm going to do two cold soups. One is a, a soup which they, you want the fancy name for it, it's vichyssoise. Basically, it's leek and potato soup. In this case, I, I add a little uh, peas to it to give it a little greenish color. Mm-hmm. It's very, very refreshing, easy to make. And I would suggest if you don't have a emulsifier, do you have a multiplier? I yet? do. It's one of my favorite it's, tools. It's tools. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He's yeah. always into gadgets I, and gadgets. I love yes. an emulsifier, <laughs> and with with a puree soup, it works out extremely mm-hmm. well. You can do it in a cuisinard. You can do it in a blender, but then you got to clean the things out. Mm-hmm. Much, and they're so, not that expensive. I, no, they're not. You know, if you just get a little one, it's you know twenty bucks, and that's about it. It's great. Yeah. So let's talk about uh, Vichy Soir. <laughs> And let me give you a little background on Vichy Soir. Uh, Vichy Soir started uh, uh, in France uh, by a fellow by the name, in 1917, <laughs> by the name of Charles Louis Diot of the Ritz Carlton Hotel there. And the reason why there's the cream in it and why it's cold is his mother used to make him soup. And it was too hot. It was too hot, so she would pour cream in there she to cool put, it. Co- she put milk in it. Or you milk, know, yeah. cool it down for her son. Yes. Right. So, <laughs> so, but, so you can you can have you can eat this dish hot, but I prefer it. It is uh, wonderful uh, cold. It is cold. so good cold. Right. It really is. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some butter and we're going to uh, we're going to heat that up, and then we're going to add uh, some leeks, and we want to make sure. The leeks are clean. Cut them in half, wash them, and slice them. Even if you wash them after you've uh, you've sliced them to yeah. make sure, because they they do they contain a lot of, a, a lot of dirt and, and yeah. sand. And there's nothing worse, I think, than <laughs> having soup and then realizing you're eating dirt. Mm-hmm. But <laughs> and uh, then we're going to add add some garlic. Uh, to me, I I like three or four cloves. <laughs> but, you know. And we're going to add some nice chicken broth, preferably homemade. But no, you, you can get away with 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 a star bun and, and potatoes. And if you're a vegetarian, you can use vegetarian broth sure. to keep that. Yeah. Uh, so, and I use russet baking potatoes. Most people take the the skin off of them. I prefer not to. I wash them. I think the skin has got a lot of. Uh, elements and good stuff in it. Well, it does. It has more of the vitamins uh, and, and nutrients. And it does have it. little spots in it when you when you finish the thing, but it really is good. And get some frozen peas and put that in there and just cook that up for about 15 minutes. Get your emulsifier out and emulsify it. In other words, you're going to puree it. Uh, add your cream and and put it if you're going to serve it. Uh, Uh, cold, put it in the uh, refrigerator overnight, bring it out, sprinkle a little chives over the top, and Olay, you've got a great classic, classic soup. The other soup I want to talk about, which again is a cold soup, which our guest makes, and this is probably not as good as what she does, but (laughs) this is a chilled roast pepper soup. I think it's the best. It's creamy, but there's no cream in it. Uh, and it, uh, I love it, absolutely love it. And we're going to take uh, some peppers, yellow peppers, red peppers, not green peppers. Uh, and we're going to put them in, a, in an oven. And we're going to put them so that they are on a rack and they're standing up with the the, uh, the cut of the stem up. 
and you're going to put him in there, and we're going to pour a little water on the bottom, and we're going to we're going to leave him in there and cook him half an hour, 425 degrees. Flip him over another half an hour, 425. Take him out of the oven and cover him with a, a, pay, a towel. Let him set for an hour, and the skin will come right off. And then you want to take the uh, the centers out, take the seeds out. Uh, and uh, that comes out very easily. Save all that wonderful, precious liquid mm -hmm. that's in there. Yes, the liquid that comes from the pepper is very Yep. Um, and uh, then we're, uh, once we've got that all done, uh, we're going to saute uh, some, some garlic and some onion and jalapeno pepper. This gives it a little zing to Jim it. Jim always likes a little hot. I like a little zing. <laughs> Do you like that too? Good. <laughs> Add the roasted peppers. Add all those wonderful juices. Add some broth, a little pinch of su sugar, salt and pepper, and let that simmer for about five minutes. Let it cool and bring it out and put it through a sieve and, and push it through a sieve so you get all that wonderful stuff in there. And so you're straining it through, a, through the sieve. Refrigerate overnight. Serve it with some chives. Drizzle it with a little olive oil, <laughs> and you got it. Now, do you roast your peppers in the in, uh, when you make this pepper soup? I mean, I do. How, yep. how different do you uh, approach this kind of soup? I don't put any spice in the one that I make, and, and I do add a little bit of cream to mine. Yeah. Well, yep. that yeah, that would be nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah I mean, again, not, not as wrong, we encourage wrong, you cream. all <laughs> to use your own judgment when you see a recipe. Mm -hmm. Recipe is nothing more than a guide. Absolutely. You make your recipe your own. And none of these, you know, that's what makes it so creative to cook, I think. Is I don't think I have ever gotten <laughs> really a recipe followed a recipe. I don't think he has anything either. <laughs> and, and followed it. I, I don't think it's he a has. guide. I, so. All right, now we're going to come to the piece, the resistance, which is the uh, balsamic uh, uh, vinegar. Uh, dr dressing for a pasta salad, and who doesn't like pasta? And th this is a really good, good, good dish. Let us talk about balsamic. You know, we hear balsamic, and there's balsamic, and then and there's, then there's balsamic, balsamic, and, there's and then there's balsamic. Um, yep. <laughs> and the price range of balsamic can go anywhere from what three dollars to three hundred dollars. Yep. And you, of course, use the three hundred dollars. Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, well. I was doing some research on balsamic vinegar because uh, I love it. Right. It's one of my favorite vinegars. Um, it has so much complexity of flavor. It does. Um, and the really good balsamic vinegars come from Italy, of course. Of course. Modena. Um, <laughs> yeah, Modena. Yeah. And um, they're classified sort of like champagne, where it's you can't really call the balsamic vinegar if it's not from that region yes. of Italy. But, but yeah, and they do the, they do that even with their wines. Mm -hmm. Somehow they get yes. I think it's more political, but that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> well, they, but they do have <laughs> these. <laughs> I could tell you about those damn Italians. Uh, well, that's <laughs> all right. Go ahead. Let it, let's go back to vi balsamic vinegar. But they uh, they age them in barrels like mm -hmm. you would a wine. But they actually burn the inside of the the barrel. They char it, and that helps give the balsamic vinegar the deep brown color ah, that it has. Okay. Um, and the really expensive balsamic vinegars are almost syrup. Yes. Like they're very sweet. They don't have that sharp, pungent uh, vinegar flavor to them. Um, now, over here in America, we generally use a commercial grade right. balsamic right. vinegar, which is still, you can get some very good sure. ones. It still but. tastes better than most red wine vinegars, as oh, far yes. as I'm concerned. Yep. Uh, you know. I like take some balsamic vinegar. Now, all the strawberries are, are coming out now, and drizzle some of that. Balsamic vinegar over strawberries, and it makes a great dessert. Delicious. And, and so, all right, let's let's give this wonderful balsamic pasta salad. We're going to make a a balsamic vinaigrette, where we're going to add some uh, balsamic vinegar, a little bit of honey, and that's I think that's a I great. I think that's the touch. secret uh, that uh, Casey has. The, some the, the Dijon honey. mustard, garlic. Got to have garlic. Yes, got to. Salt <laughs> and pepper and olive oil. 
Simple, simple recipe. And this actually, uh, the Dijon mustard acts as an emulsifier. So sometimes when you have a vinaigrette, your oil and vinegar will stay separate. This one, you're going to have like a solid. And I like the Dijon. Me too. Much it adds better. a nice tang. There, there is a tang, but it's not quite as tangy as the yellow. And yeah. I don't know. There's a, a depth and flavor yes. in the Dijon mustard that I really, really like. So Casey's going to take some, some vegetables some squash and zucchini and cut them into uh, one half inch slices and some red peppers that have been quartered and she's going to mix some of that vinaigrette with it and she's going to grill them yep and uh, so you're going to have that wonderful grilled flavor to them uh, and you let that cool and you mix in that uh, your pasta and your vegetables and some spinach and yes. mozzarella mm -hmm. and some tomatoes <laughs> and basil and this vinaigrette and salt and pepper yep and you have it that, that is, is a, a meal great, it's a full a, meal yeah it's a it full is. Meal. It and is. it's great for a hot summer day oh yeah. it is and do it all outside on your grill and not heat up your house and it's very refreshing and and it what i what i would do because i can't do do this whole <laughs> thing <laughs> jim would have to change i it, would yes. probably use feta <laughs> Mm -hmm. Oh, it would be great with feta. I'd probably Absolutely. use feta. Mm -hmm. But uh, great recipe. Thank you. And uh, we hope you enjoy it. And they're all, all those recipes are avail available to you all. Uh, and uh, thank you very, very much for, uh, for joining us. Thank you for having me. It's all right. Fun. And is there anything else you'd like to tell us about your uh, wonderful establishment? I really enjoy it. Thank you. Well, um, the pastries, we do have a full selection of pastries. Uh, I make specialty uh, cakes for birthdays and anniversaries and um, just stop in and check it out. It's a really nice space, good food. Great and space. I hope that uh, yeah. everyone comes in and well, thank takes you. a look. Now, uh, next week, uh, I have got a onion soup that has a very secret ingredient in it. <laughs> We have a new restaurant in town, uh, Sequester's Tavern, and they That's make the a old, uh, Bulls Run. Bulls Run, yep. yeah. They make a, a a onion soup that is outstanding. So we're gonna I'm gonna try to wring that recipe out <laughs> from them. And um, we're also gonna be talking next next time about crostinis, and making some little pates and little things that you serve. This is summer. You want to be outside take some crostini which is just is nothing more than grilled bread that you rub with garlic and then we have all these little ingredients that are going to go with it and i also have got a couple more mafia recipes for you <laughs> gabe, gabe lombardo keeps giving jim these cookbooks i don't know our menu our menu is changing completely but it's okay hey it's recipes you can't refuse what do you want from me <laughs> so well. so that's what we're going to do so we hope you enjoyed, and come back and see us soon. It's, go to the market, and so, go have yes. lunch. Cafe 19, it's great. Breakfast. And breakfast. Stop for coffee. Yeah. <laughs> might even see me there. Yeah, you might. Ciao. So thank you. <laughs> Bye. 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 <laughs>